The COVID-19 pandemic has instilled a level of fear and anxiety in most of us. Living through the crisis is taking a toll on most people's mental health. Many have been faced with new realities of working from home. Some people have been forced temporary and even permanent unemployment. And more importantly, prolonged isolation from friends and family. For some, these experiences could lead to depression, loneliness, anxiety, and even hopelessness. Welcome to this special program. My name is Masi Kandie. And I'm Pauline Odiambo. Now, for some people, these issues were a daily struggle before COVID-19, and they could get worse due to the pandemic. Emerging evidence also suggests that the lockdowns and the redirection of healthcare resources to the pandemic have seriously disrupted mental health care in many parts of the world. Today, we ask, is mental health then the silent pandemic? Share your thoughts with us in the comment section. We'd love to hear your views. Now, now, to kick us off on this special program is the experience of Sherry Kimani, a mother of three who until recently realized a sense of distress within herself following lockdown measures which kept her family apart. Personally, what I can say about that quarantine time is it was not easy because uh, I was far from you. But as you are being hard, you yourself, what are you feeling? What are you going through? Me, yeah, I was hard, but in deep in my heart, I, I maybe the same your fear, you know. It wasn't an easy time for me either, because other than being separated from him, I'm in a country that's not mine. So that, that of course, adds on to the anxiety and the feelings of loneliness that already exist as someone who doesn't live at home. But sometimes, I'll be honest, I didn't deal with these feelings in the most healthy way, so... I, I mean, I would vent a lot. Um, I would show my, I would express myself, especially to Mark. His job was really to hold me up and boost my morale, which he did really well. But what this whole experience has shown me is that I may, I may, I may want to seek um, professional mental health. I may want to seek either a psychiatrist, and um, because it. The time that you're on your own and you get to think about all the things that you have time to think about, your past experiences, your past relationships, your past, I mean, what the way you're reacting to this situation must be stemming up from somewhere. So this had ma has made me realize that I may be wanting to seek for professional mental health. But now we are together. Love you. <laughs> Love you. Wow, what a warm feeling for Sherry and her family to be reunited after four long months of isolation from her husband, Marco. Sherry's case is not isolated though. Thousands of other people across the continent are struggling with different mental health challenges during this crisis. Joining us in studio to answer your questions on how to protect your mental health during this pandemic is Dr. Oleshon Peter Nubi, a consultant psychiatrist and lecturer at the University of Nigeria in uh, at the University of Lagos, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Also with us is Kenya's Ben Saiko, a gospel artist, vlogger, and influencer who is here to talk about what it felt like to lose a loved one during this pandemic. Thank you both for joining us. Now, Ben, if we could start with you, maybe just take us through how was your experience like uh, losing a loved one, especially at this time when your social distancing and, you know, people can't come to you? Oh, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, it's really an honor. And now to talk about the issue is that it's really, it, it got really complicated because first of all, uh, for those who guys, for those who might not know, I had a small sister who was suffering from acute myeloid leukemia, which is a form of blood cancer. And uh, what that what happened is that uh, it relapsed after two years, and it was very very aggressive uh, on my sister uh, when it relapsed. That's in February. So by the time COVID is starting, it's really like she's really really sick because you know um, it's it's getting worse and worse by the day because. The thing, the thing about blood cancer is that it affects various parts of your body uh, because your blood is all over you, all over your body. Mm -hmm. 
So that would really put a strain on us because even the visiting was was a hassle. You know, you, you, you find that the hospital only allows one member per day. So it, it becomes very hard for all of you guys to be there for her. And considering that she's very young and she's in a cancer cancer ward, she was always the youngest in all the wards that she was in. So for her, she, she you know, it, it must have been hard for her because, you know, she's not with other young kids. She's with, with older, with a bit older folks. And then it's even trickier because you can't go see her. So that was really, really hard. But now losing her at that time was even more confusion because, you know, in Africa, there's, uh, we have we respect uh, the death process and all that stuff. So having to tell guys that you cannot come visit us was was very very hard. And how In fact, did at that, one point, yeah. we, mm -hmm. sorry. Yes. Um, at one point, we had we had so many people coming to visit. And you know, when people say when people hear that you've lost someone, they don't even ask, "Can we come?" They come. They just come. And, 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 you know, you can't chase them away now that they're here. And at one point, we even had cops, you know, bust into our house and they're like, yo, why are you, why are you guys gathering here yet? You know, uh, there's a pandemic out there and you're not supposed to be meeting more than 15 people. And, and now we had to send away some, some of the guys who had come to mourn with us. So it's really, it's a very depressing uh, season, especially if you lose a loved one, because you will have to bury them very quick. That's one. Number two, you will not have the enough time to have people come grieve with you. So you have to go through this um, right. alone or they have to support you virtually. Right, yeah. right. Now, Dr. No, do, no, Dr. Nubi, Ben's case is not really isolated. Like, how, what's your advice for people who are, have lost uh, people during this time in this pandemic? Well, uh Thank you for having me once again, and I'm happy we are discussing a very important aspect of human life, and that is uh, mental health, psychology, and the likes. Uh, just as you said, Ben's case is not uh, alone. There are so many, myriads of cases. Uh, people have lost their loved ones, and just as you said, they need to quickly bury the person. People cannot come and grieve with you. And of course, if there is any situation that alters our social interaction, that situation is really taken so seriously. And we haven't said that and haven't established that. It is important for people to know that change is a constant thing. The only thing that is constant in life is change. And even though we know that it comes with its psychological trauma, the emotional sequelae that comes with it, we just need to know how to adjust. For example, being realistic about the situation of things. Once we are real, that is the first thing, knowing at the back of your mind that, oh, this is not a situation that is peculiar to me alone. The purpose of this whole situation is because of this pandemic. And because of that, I am supposed to do things different from the way I've been doing it before. Once you allow that to sink in, adjustment becomes natural, and then you begin to adjust to situation. So instead of the physical grieving, the physical affection, it cannot be done virtually. Instead of seeing, oh, people will come around People we are we are, you know we're going to displace the corpse. People will move around. They will view the corpse. This has to be buried. Mm -hmm. But despite that, our loved ones that have died are still in our hearts. And doctor, this does mm -hmm. not. Yes, this does not remove the fact that not grief. We should grieve, but in another way this time around. True, valid points there. And Ben, sorry to take you back, but for the sake of the viewers who are watching us online and would be could be going through this, how did the loss of your sister affect your mental health? At, sorry to take you back, especially at that time with the lockdown and social distancing in Kenya. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, it's harder because, you know, uh, on one hand, you're dealing with this dark cloud of, of the COVID, the, the COVID dark cloud. And then on, on, on the other hand, you're also dealing with a loss. So you're trying to balance a lot of emotions within yourself and, and the confusion that comes within there is, is a lot. But then also on the flip side, 
because we we held the memorial, we had a virtual memorial service, and and the number of people who had, who were uh, who were logged in on on the Instagram live were five thousand people. So uh, on one hand, we have a situation where we can't have people come physically, but then on the other hand, we are opening it up to even more people. We had people from Tanzania, people in Saudi Arabia, people in the states who are following the memorial service uh, online, and so we also. It, we might not have had the usual custom of us having physical people. And maybe if, if, if it was a physical attendance, we'd have had, let's say, around 400 people, 300 people. But now when you open it up to the virtual world, now you have 5,000 people. So the downside is that you're dealing with, with the loss and you can't have people physically with you there. But then also the other side is that you've also given people who are even not within the country an opportunity to attend the memorial service and the opportunity to stand with you guys. So it has its disadvantage where you feel like, you know, it can be lonely and, and sad. But then also if you are finding a, a positivity in everything, the other side is that a lot of people really stood with us, a lot, a lot of people from all over the world. Mm, right. And Dr. Nubi, apart from grief, how can people remain mentally healthy during this pandemic? Hmm. Thank you so much for that. Uh, the truth is this. There are many ways and different strategies that individuals can use. And so the first thing we say, there is no cap that fits all. Do what works for you. I will, I will mention a few, but you must first of all ask yourself, how do I cope with bad situations? How do I cope when my normal routine is distorted? What is your coping ability? What is your personality? These are the things you need to put as you try to cope. The first thing is you must understand what this COVID is all about. Feed your mind on positive news. Listen to news that will lift your spirit up. Not the numbers of people that died or the total numbers of unemployment that we're going to have. Oh, I'm going to lose my job. IMF will do this, World Bank will do this. Don't feed your mind on negativity. Feed your mind on the fact that this is not a death sentence. Feed your mind on the hope that vaccines will be gotten on time. And that is the first thing you need to do. The next thing is you need to rest. Take adequate rest. Sleep well. Because when you sleep well, all the anxiety hormones and everything that's supposed to trigger fear, stress, and anxiety will die down. Eat balanced diets. Avoid caffeines, caffeines and other things that are stimulant because they further worsen anxiety. Anxiety. Make sure that you maintain a regular routine. Whether you are in a partial lock, total lockdown, ensure that you maintain your regular routine. Then very importantly, know your body alarm system. Know when your body is going down. Because when things are affecting you emotionally, your body system, you will feel it. Either through the fact that you'll not be sleeping very well, or you'll not be sleeping very well, or your mood will be alternating. Some, it is their period, if they're women, if you are, I mean, if you're a female gender, it may be the change in your period, monthly cycle. Understand when things are going on. Don't live in self-denial and say that you are strong. I'm going to go through it. And once you don't get into your alarm system, the body goes into resistance and then into exhaustion. And once you have exhaustion, you have all forms of mental illness, be it depression, post-traumatic stress, anxiety disorder, and the like. Mm -hmm. So it is important. We listen to our internal medicine and then we take adequate rest and seek professional help on time. Very good points, Dr. Nubi. Very good points. Mm -hmm. Pauline, I hope you're also taking yes, note we, of those. It's... I'm actually checking some of the comments coming yeah. in on Facebook. And Tumelo Ikaneng says, I have given up on completing my master's degree. I feel super hopeless. This start and stop leaves one powerless and lost. Um, I'm seeing Brown Jimmy from Nigeria saying it is a pandemic and it is fast being spread by governments of the world. Mm -hmm. there, 
and someone else, Obade Simon, also from, from Nigeria, mm -hmm. saying, yeah, you can say so because it has affected so many people in this part of the world, but there's no major reason behind it, though. I mean, Pauline, many people are yes. trying to find solutions, but I like what Dr. Nubi is saying that instead of feeding on the negative, yeah. try and stay feed on the positive, positive, stay positive. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, most of the discussion about addressing COVID-19 related mental health problems is focused on what we can do as individuals to help those affected. Here's Millicent Akeo with some tips on how to cope during this pandemic. Feeling under pressure during the COVID-19 pandemic is a likely experience for you and for your friends, colleagues and family. But if you're having obsessive or compulsive thoughts related to the virus or the broader uncertainty, then remind yourself that anxiety and stress is normal in this scenario. Experts say, try to breathe, meditate, exercise, relax. Remember the things that you really enjoy doing and find a way to do them. More importantly, call your healthcare provider if stress gets in the way of your daily activities for several days in a row. Experts encourage us to be empathetic to all those who are experiencing psychological discomfort. They deserve our support, compassion and kindness. Hugging was a great thing when we were not worried about passing the virus along, but we want to make sure we flatten that curve. You can also express virtual love by reminding your loved ones that you love and care for them. Thank you, Millicent, for that very insightful uh, explanation. Um, I'm seeing uh, El Elijah Ngugi from Kenya saying mental health is key and should not be ignored during the COVID-19 uh, season. Also, mm -hmm. Samit has been saying it's, it's, here, it's been here for so long, it's a pandemic. Right. Yeah. And true. Chuku no so no for says it takes extra awareness and care to maintain top-notch mental health when the surrounding environment and happenings around are miasmic. COVID-19 pandemic has occasioned many hardships on people worldwide, ranging from economic to health. If you have no food, no easy access to medical facilities, no work, and in most cases, no exercise and outdoor activities and relaxation, you will uncons unconsciously drown in depression. Mental health can be top-notch in an unhealthy atmosphere as we presently have. And some positive on, hanging on the positive, Pauline, yeah. there's Alhagi Njie from Gambia yeah. saying, we're in this together, strong, we will get, uh, we're in this together, stay strong, we will get through this, happy days still ahead. Wonderful. Yeah. So, Dr. Nubi, so how can we reduce stigma against persons who are suffering from COVID-19? Stigma to the people and also to their caregivers. Thank you very much for this question because I saw a young man uh, two weeks ago. He had been treated for COVID and is now negative. But you know what? The wife left when he came back home due to ignorance that he is still having it or he may have it. And then, I mean, they may have been having problems before, which I gathered, but immediately he came back, having tested positive, though he's now negative, well, I mean, negative. There are so many people. Friends don't want to call him. Nobody wants to associate with him. This is what we are battling, especially in this part of the world. And that is why we need to ask ourselves, why do people stigmatize any condition? They stigmatize, especially when they are on certainties around that condition. You don't know whether it is curable. You don't know whether if you have it, you will die. You don't know whether people can spread it through any means. And that is why we need to spread information. Information has to, positive information has to go more than the negative ones. Some believe it is planned. Some believe it is a rumor. Some have so many, you know, connotations around it. And that is why positive and genuine research news has to go to the people. So that the more they know, knowledge will change attitude. And attitude positively will change good, we bring about good behavior. So that is the first thing. Then people who are, who are affected, or who have been positive, they themselves need to carry themselves. They need, they need to carry themselves with good courage, good aura. They must not self-stigmatize themselves. I know someone I've been calling who had positive uh, COVID and is now negative, but she doesn't want to talk to anybody. She doesn't want anyone to know. 
she doesn't want to be an ambassador to tell others that, oh, listen to my story. I was once positive, but now I am okay. So that is self-stigmatization. And that we must not encourage. So by and large, the most important thing is that when people have the new knowledge and they know that this is not a death sentence, mm. the stigma will reduce. So we need to spread the news out there. Mm -hmm. So, Ben, uh, also in terms of positivity and stigma around it, um, if you could go back to your case, what po points and tips would you give others watching? What made you, you know, where you are now? I know it's a process, um, but uh, with your music as well, how tips and points for those who are in this situation right now, what would you tell them? Right. I mean, um, what I'd say is that it's very important to have a support system. Uh, I, human beings are naturally, we are wired to, to be very social. So it's very important to have a support system of people so that people can share their story and you can share your story as well so that you know that you are not in a unique situation by yourself. When I did this video, because I did a video talking about the about how I'm dealing with grief during this period, and I got so many messages. That video is almost doing 50,000 right now in a week. And every single day, I kept getting DM messages from people telling me, hey, I've just lost my mom a few minutes ago. Hey, we just lost this one two days ago. And I never thought I'd go through it, but now I've listened to your story. And now I'm a, bit, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit encouraged because I know it's not only happening to me. So we, we need to start. We need to start making it. Uh, we need to create comfortable spaces for guys to share some of these uh, struggles that they're facing during this pandemic. I've also seen online a lot of guys uh, saying that they've gone back home to live with their parents. Some people are now living together just to cost share. It's it's perfectly normal. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with your life specifically, but we need to create the, to put out more of these stories out there so that people can can connect and know that they're not going through it alone. So for me, that's something that I can share to, to people who are watching uh, during this period. All right, uh, Ben, um, did you also yeah. experience uh, some type of stigma? For example, when you were going to the hospital daily to go and see your sister, like yeah. what was re the yeah. reception of people around you, your neighbors, like what, what was the kind of yeah. reception to that? Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they 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 didn't know about it like um before before she passed on we we had not i had not i was not i wasn't i wasn't keeping people updated on my movements on how on how often i'm visiting her because also our movement was limited at the hospital the biggest challenge is at the hospital hospitals in kenya are almost empty and and the restrictions to access a hospital are also a bit high uh, and it's normal given the given what we are dealing with so at that time, not so many people knew about it. So there was very little stigma. But the challenge, the challenge of accessing the hospital on a daily basis and, you know, trying to be there for your family member, that's where the biggest challenge for me was. And Dr. Nubi, there's a question here about emerging evidence suggesting that uh, the lockdowns are, and the pivot of healthcare services to the pandemic have seriously disrupted mental health care in many parts of the world. What are your thoughts on this? Well, such is not, thank you very much, such is not unexpected. Uh, because when you look at mental health services that have been provided pre-COVID, it's not even enough. The services are not enough. And then you are now having a situation that is, I mean, that has the potential to increase the mental health status of people. We are already dealing with low manpower, low resources, low budgetary allocation. And now we are having more cases of emotional illness. It's, mental illness is a silent pandemic care. And that is why there's need to incorporate psychosocial support in the management of COVID-19, and not just the biological one alone, drugs and testing and co. So we have more hand, more, more mental health cases. Don't forget budgetary allocation resources devoted to mental health initially pre-COVID is an abysmal level. And now we, we have not changed that. We are still, you know, groping with the few resources. And now we have more hands. So the services have been disrupted. And, you know, so many, for, for, I mean, for example, in tertiary institutions where they provide psychiatric services, such cannot happen again. 
because at the point in time, patients have to be discharged to the community. The health centers within the communities are not equipped. Thank Psychiatrists, you. Psychiatrists, workers, psychologists are not in the community. And so who will take care of this? So you have the surgeons of those who are already getting better, they have better illness, right. two cases are and then you have a lot of problem in our hands. Right. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, just coming in on Facebook also, a comment here from Camillus18. He says, mental health has spiked high. Rape cases in Nigeria is becoming alarming. Our girls are not safe anymore on the street. Another comment here from Demond Alvarez from Texas. This whole pandemic is crazy within itself. I hope the world comes back stronger and more united than ever before. Uh, Clear points, uh, Pauline. So with the rise in the cases of mental illness, research points to a shift in people's use of drug and alcohol during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, more than ever, young people and schools need to access to need access to evidence-based resources that could promote healthy habits and prevent problematic drug and alcohol use from an early age. That's right, Marcy. Today, 99% of the world's children are living under some form of pandemic-related limit on movement. 60% 60 60 live in countries under full or partial lockdowns, and 1.5 billion children are out of school, according to an article by the World Economic Forum. So, Ben, we'll come straight to you. <laughs> You're not a child, but you resonate even your music and the content that you give on your social media pages resonate more to the younger generation. What are some of the challenges? I know you've said that people have reached out to you. Um, what are some of the challenges that you or your peers have experienced during this con uh, pandemic? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, one of the biggest challenges that we are facing is that most African governments rarely focus on, on the young people or, or what the young people are doing. And Rarely do they do something to boost these economies. For example, in Kenya, we had a situation where the president was supposed to boost the, the creative economy, especially in music, and he was supposed to give out some money that hasn't yet reached the musicians. And even that one, uh, even the money that he gave still can't be enough to sustain the, the industry as a whole. But the government could have made easier solutions by just sealing all the loopholes where money just comes in and goes to the wrong hands. It could have been as simple as that. We, we are looking at other countries. I, I, I saw in Germany also they were giving a stipend to some of the people in the arts industry. But you see, in our countries, especially in Africa, rarely do we get that support from, from the government. So basically, guys are just uh, outright suffering. You know, that's what I'm saying. I've seen so many people now opting to live together, uh, people opting to go back to their parents' homes because uh, you find some people who are all who are only in the events industry and you find that the government does not have an alternative or a backup plan mm -hmm. to support some of this events industry. Yet there are some there are there's so many emergency kitties uh, within the government, but that money never goes anywhere and never gets to anyone. So we're having a very, very huge problem with the government. And that's why you can see there's such a huge hatred and, and, and complaints, especially on social media, towards yes. the government, uh, especially from the young people, because we feel like everything is just dangling in the air. We were just right. trying to get our footing in life. Right. And then on top of that, now you have to get your footing in the middle of a pandemic. So right. it becomes right. double tragic. Right. So as we wrap up, we're running out of time. But Dr. Nubi, how can children be assisted to cope during this pandemic? Thank you very much. Uh, we need to understand that children are the most vulnerable uh, when we talk about these conditions uh, that is ravaging the world now. And that is why explanation is key. We must not assume that they are children and then they don't know anything. So we need to explain to them. We need to tell them why they are not in school. And we need to do, we need to give them full support. Now they are going to be in our faces. We're going to be annoyed at them. We're going to spank them. But we must first of all connect with them. So I want to employ adults to connect with the children before they condemn. The key word is connect before condemning. Understand how your child is feeling. Mm -hmm. Under child, understand why he's acting the way he's acting. Or some will go into regression. Mm -hmm. Some will begin to throw some teenagers to addiction because they will say, like, I'm bored. 
I can't see my friends. I'm not in school. I don't enjoy online learning, this and that. Don't condemn them. Mm -hmm. Understand that the equilibrium has changed mm -hmm. and the ways about your job and co, so also is affecting them. So let's Dr. connect with them. Yes. Right. Then before we condemn at all. And what a way to summarize, connect and then condemn, not condemning before you connect. Right. Thank you. We want to appreciate your participation on this special program on BBC Africa Facebook page. Thanks to our guest, Dr. Olusen Peter Nubi, a consultant mental health physician based in Nigeria in the universe, and also a lecturer at University of Lagos, mm -hmm. and Ben Saiko. If we had more time, you would sing for us, but next time we'll have you do that. A Kenyan-based gospel artist, vlogger, and influencer. And to our viewers, at home and those watching from our social media platforms as well as those partner stations times television capital fm in malawi nbs television in uganda splash fm in nigeria yfm in ghana qtv in gambia and sky communications in liberia now remember this covid19 is highly contagious to avoid getting infected wash your hands for at least 20 seconds cover your cough or sneeze with tissue then throw it in the trash clean and disinfect frequently touched objects stay home as much as possible and do not do not go out if you are sick remember pauline wear masks at all times in public settings right. and remember to contact your health worker if you have symptoms of the virus. Thank you and keep safe.